Can I push it? The reason God has a will for even the smallest things, watch this, is because God is omniscient. God knows everything. You know what God knows? God knows the consequence of every choice you make. God says, I know you got 13 choices in front of you. And I know where all 13 will lead. And the reason I have a will for every small thing is because even the small things begin to point you towards my perfect will for the final destination that I'm trying to take you to. There is no decision too small for God to be involved in. He tells him, I want you to build houses and grow in Babylon so that when I bring out my other will, 70 years from now to take you to Jerusalem, you will have been prospered and you will not have died, that you will have generations that can then move back to Jerusalem. So if you don't do the will I have for you today, you'll never know the will I have for you tomorrow. I need you to obey my will in the smallest things. Hear me. God has a will for everything. When you're standing in line trying to figure out what to order, God has a will. When you're flipping through Netflix trying to figure out what to watch for the next 30 minutes, God has a will. When you're down at the dealership trying to figure out what color to place your order in, God has a preference. When you're on the matchmakehookup.com scrolling through every picture, God has a will. When you stand in your closet trying to figure out what you gonna wear today, God has a will. To God be the glory for all the great things he has done. Somebody ought to just say, God, we honor you. We honor you. We extol your name. We worship your holy name for your goodness. For how you have kept us in our right minds. We give you honor and glory. Somebody let a sound of worship open up in this place. Pour out your spirit, God. Rest and abide in this place. Somebody say glory. Somebody say honor. Somebody say we extol you. Hallelujah. He's a good God, is he not? Did anybody come to give God glory? Did anybody come to lift up the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Do me a favor. I know it's raining outside, but we about this dry on the inside. And we're welcoming in this very Holy Spirit right now in this place. Like the dew in the morning, may he rest upon our hearts. Anybody want God to reside there? Hallelujah. Come on, rock with us right there. We're just going to go ahead and sing to our Father. Because he's a good God, so very kind. Oh, yeah. Like the dew in the morning, gently rest upon my heart. That's good. Sing to him. Tell him. Like the dew in the morning, yeah. gently rest
Jesus there. Hallelujah to the great God. Do me a favor. Go on and high five your neighbor or fist bump them. Say, I'm glad you're here. Give them a little shoulder action. Say, I'm glad you came because we've come to give God praise and make noise for the glory of God. Put those hands together. If you're excited to be in the house, if you're excited to be in church, come on over, happy people. Let me see you. Hey, hey, all the happy people. Let me see you.
praise you, Lord. No matter what I'm going through, I'm going to praise you. I'll praise you, Lord. No matter how heavy it gets, I'm going to praise you. I'll praise you, Lord. Did anybody come to tell God a little something <laughs> that you're going to praise him, Lord? Woo! Lift your hands where you are. This is a place of surrender. Because God is deserving of the praise. And when you have the chance to lift up your hands and open your mouth, it's in this space. Come on and tell God something. Tell him I'm going to praise you no matter what. Tell him I'm going to worship you no matter what. Tell him I honor you no matter what. Tell him though you slay me no matter what. Oh. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh God. My father. Come on, lift up your voice saying. together ring it out say great From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. Our scripture reading for this morning is found in Mark chapter 3, verses 31 through 35 reading from the New Revised Standard Version. And it reads, Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and your sisters are outside asking for you. 
And he replied, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearers of his divine word. It is now prayer time. I am sure some of us have entered into this physical sanctuary as well as the virtual congregation with words, with, with names that are on our hearts. We have this morning Zosie Garner. She is, she is dealing with the death of her uncle, Charlie Whitaker Jr. We have Brianna Graham. She is dealing with the passing of her aunt, Dr. Pat Barr Harrison. We have Terrence and Tara Bright. They are dealing with the passing of their aunt, Charlene Fisher. We also have Effie Butler. She is dealing with the transition of her sister, Claudette Smith. We have Anise and Deacon Herb Harville. They are dealing with the passing of the father, Marvin Hyman. We also have Patrice Wilson Edmonds. She is dealing with the transition of her father, William Earl Wilson. And finally, we have Karen Thomas and Kathy Burton. They are dealing with the transition of Andre Thomas, the brother and cousin. Who are the names that we are lifting up this morning, whether you are here in the physical congregation or the virtual sanctuary? Let us pray. God, how we thank you. Thank you for being who you are. God, we thank you for walking with us and being with us each and every day of our lives. God, we have some of our family members here who are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. God, you know what they need. Support them and sustain them and be with them right now as they deal with the new reality of their loved ones no longer here. But God, just as you are with them, be with us right now, oh God. Allow us to have, oh God, a, a spirit-filled service that we know that we've been in your presence. God, some of us came in here with burdens. Some of us came here with trials and tribulations. And God, we know that if we cast them at your feet, you can work them out way better than we can. So God, have your way in this service. Move how you need to move in this service. Throw your weight around in this service so that we know that we've been in your presence. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon us. And God, we'll be careful to give your name the honor and glory in which it is due. Lord, have your way. We need you right now. And we trust you and we magnify your name. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray this prayer with expectation and thanksgiving. And let us all together say amen. amen. And let us all remain standing for our hymn of rejoicing. We'll understand it better by and by.
we're telling our story by and by, let us greet our neighbors one with the other. Amen. morning, Alfred Street. To our guests who grace us with the presence of God, by your presence and worship with us today, to our family and friends who connect with us across the world wide web, grace and peace be unto you from God who loves us as both mother and father, and Jesus Christ who always and alone is our resurrected, our risen, our reigning, and our returning redeemer. By the way, y'all were singing them praise and worship songs. I believe there's somebody that's just glad to be in the house of the Lord on this Lord's day. Cherie's praise and worship, Psalms of praise. Thank you for already ushering us into the presence of the Lord, our God. Here at Alpha Street, we like to always begin our service of giving the Lord the worship that God deserves with a moment of reverence and remembrance of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the truth be told, when some of us walked in the sanctuary today, the sanctuary roof should have fallen in and caved in on you. Because none of us deserve to be in the house of the Lord. God offers us the privilege of being in God's presence because the blood of Jesus covers our sins. That we truly are the redeemed of the Lord, not the perfect of the Lord, but the redeemed of the Lord. Every now and then I find myself just whispering a prayer to myself, Jesus, keep me near the cross. That's not just to remind me to bite my tongue when I feel like saying some words that aren't in scripture, but to remind me that it is only at the cross of Jesus Christ that I find who I truly am in God. We break bread and share in cup that we might stay close to the cross of Christ. We share this with all who accept and believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, if that's you. And prayerfully, when you came in today, you received the elements of the Lord's Supper, both bread and cup. If you did not, simply wave a hand. We have deacons who will joyfully serve you. As they're taking care of those in the sanctuary, we invite those online to take hold of both bread and cup that you will use to share with us in this moment of reverence and remembrance. As we access the bread, Don't, don't push me.
Come on, everybody. Till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the rim. Jesus, keep me. Jesus, keep me. represents the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who alone is our Christ. Crucified, dead, buried, resurrected, ascended into heaven, sitting at the right hand of God, making intercessions for our sins, and one day to the glory of God returning. Let us break bread and eat together. This cup is the memorial of the blood shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins and the redemption of our souls. For what can wash away my sins other than the blood of Jesus Christ? Let us drink together. God of unconditional love, we receive through our faith what do you extend to us in your grace? The forgiveness of our sins, the eternal security of our salvation, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to guide us into a life that makes you happy. And oh God, the awesome assignment we have to share your transformative love with others. In the same way you've loved us, may we love one another in the way that you have forgiven us. May we forgive each other. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen. As we celebrate and recognize the presence of God in this space, both here and online, we recognize God's presence by first of all acknowledging our guests. You all know that we firmly believe that whenever there's a new face in your midst, you ought to be careful how you treat them because there may be an angel in your presence. The Bible reminds us that God's deepest displeasure with God's people were when God's people closed their borders to the immigrants when they were not open to those who were seeking and searching for a better life. Uh, and so in this space, we welcome new faces. If you're a guest of our church, you don't mind us recognizing you as such, would you just wave a hand in the air that we may thank God for those who are not members but are yet in worship with us today. Alpha Street, help me thank God for hands that are raised in the balcony. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Alpha Street Baptist Church. We're grateful that God ordered your steps here. Prayers that you leave this place, travel safely to wherever home may be, and know that the love and the joy of Jesus Christ that we share with you today, we will gladly share with you again. Come on back and visit us. And please know that after three visits in a row, you are a common law member of Alpha Street Baptist Church, and we will gladly add you to the membership roster. Today, we also thank God for the gift of life. If there's anyone celebrating another year of life, if you're celebrating a recent birthday, won't you allow us to celebrate with you as you would stand, and we thank God for you. Any birthdays in the sanctuary today? As they stand, help me thank God for them. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday in the balcony. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. Thankful that God has seen fit to give you another year of life. 
Then finally, we acknowledge the presence of God in the gift of love, especially those spouses that are celebrating another year of marriage. If you're here today and you and your spouse are grateful that God is seeing you through another 365 of more better than worse, we're going to ask that you would stand that we may celebrate you. Any anniversaries to celebrate on today? Amen. Congratulations. Please remain standing. Say it loud and proud. How many years you are celebrating? Congratulations on your 29th anniversary. God's blessings upon you. Listen, family, as we move quickly into worship today, we want to thank God for bringing us successfully through our seminary Saturdays. I pray that you are blessed as we brought in so many voices to give us a broader understanding of not only what's happening in the world, but particularly and the tension that is playing out in the Middle East. If you were not able to attend, we encourage you to watch those online. They are informative and inspirational, that you may know what your responsibility is as a Christian as we pray for an end to the violence and the genocide that is taking place in the Middle East. We are in the middle of Seek. We've come to the end of week one. Praise be to God. Amen. Do me a favor, lean over to somebody and ask them, how's Seek going? How's Seek going for you? I just want to testify that all y'all who said tea is as good as coffee, you lied. <laughs> Decaffeinated tea is not God's will for my life. I can't wait for February the 11th to get here. We are in a consecrated time of prayer and fasting. It's not too late to register. If you have not, we ask you to covenant with the more than 13,000 people who are seeking the Lord across the kingdom of Christ. We give glory to God for that number. If you've not signed out, the fill out the covenant form. There's still time to do so. Don't forget to join us every morning at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m for our prayer call on Zoom as we start our day and end our days collectively and corporately in prayer. And then you all know that beginning tomorrow we move into our Daniel fast for those that are prepared and those who are physically able. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> Somebody say tomorrow. Amen. <laughs> get, get it in today, brother. Get it in today. We move into the Daniel fast on tomorrow, and then you all know that the, the, the final week is, amen, when we tighten our belts, buckle down, and yes, Jesus, we will have altar call prayer next Sunday, getting ready for our all-liquid diet, but I pray that during this journey, more importantly, that you're drawing closer to the Lord, that you're feeling the power of prayer and fasting, that you're knowing what it's like for the Holy Spirit to give you victory over temptations, that you pick up your phone and the Holy Spirit says, put it down, that you're reaching out for something you're not supposed to have, and you hear the Holy Spirit say, ah, 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 that there's nothing in the world like knowing how to hear the voice of God. As we move into this year, well, I want to thank you all for being generous and faithful. You're so generous and faithful that we don't even need to lift up an offering here at Alpha Street. We don't pass the plate. The ushers don't come down the aisle. No one gives you a prophetic promise of what's going to happen when you give. The reality is, is that giving is not a deposit on a future blessing. Giving is gratitude on the one that's already come. Let me say that again. That when we give, we're not giving because we anticipate or expect God to give us more. We give because God has already blessed us. That's why the tithe and the offering is not on credit. The tithe and the offering is based on what you've already received. The question just is whether or not you will be faithful and obedient. So today I'm going to ask you to just be prayerful. No preacher's got to push you into obeying the Holy Spirit. Pray. Whatever the Holy Spirit places on your heart, we encourage you to be faithful and generous and obedient as you give. You know all the online platforms that are available to you. We ask you to just choose one and do that which God has first placed in purpose on your heart, that God may be glorified through your giving. If you're online, we encourage you to do the very same thing, to help us as we continue to make glorious the name of Jesus Christ across the entire world and the world wide web. We're going to be blessed in song now as the Psalms of Praise come to lead us, and then we get ready to receive the word of God in sermon.
that we may go out and live the word of God in our daily lives.
Lord, we've been through enough to not take life for granted, to not ever assume that we've made it to a, the end of a day because we made good decisions, but only because you kept us. Somebody today, oh Lord, knows their testimony is I'm still here. And for that, we bless your name. Pray now, God, that you'll stand up strong in this, your servant, as I attempt to declare what thus saith the Lord our God. You and I both know I'm not worthy. I pray, O oh God, that you would rise above the frailty of my flesh, that someone might hear what the word of God speaks today. Speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. In the name of Jesus, who is our Christ, we do pray. Amen. I'm excited to share and start a new series with you today that will carry us for the next few weeks into the book of Jeremiah. If you would locate in your Bibles or on your devices, the 29th chapter of Jeremiah, which is arguably one of the most popular chapters, not only in that book, but in all the Bible. But there's one verse in there that's going to make somebody say amen. amen. Jeremiah chapter 29, and this morning, we ask those who are physically able to stand with us as we reverence the reading of God's word, beginning in verse number four, as I read out of the New Revised Standard Version of God's word. Prayerful that you can keep along with whatever version God has blessed you to carry today. Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, beginning in verse number four. Listen for the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf for in its welfare you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you. Do not listen to your dreams that you dream, for it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, says the Lord. Lean over somebody and say, don't listen to everybody. Verse 10, for thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed will I visit you and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. Here's the shout. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not your harm to give you a future with hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me, says the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations in all the places where I've driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. If you seek me with all your heart, I will let you find me. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. In life, sometimes we come to a fork in the road. Which way do I I don't go? know what to do. I have to choose what's best for me. I don't feel in control anymore. Where our decisions on which path to take isn't clear, and the influences around us cloud our judgment. 
Is she really I mean, the one you for only me? live once. If God wanted me to be happy, get that you should really think about your career. Amidst the challenges in life, trust in the Lord's plan. Seek him and read his word. He will guide you from any captivity to a place of restoration and fulfillment. Lord, thy will be done. Thy will be done. I was reading the results of a survey that was recently sent out to church-going Christians. Dr. Judy, the survey polled church-going Christians asking them a simple yet complicated question. The question was, what is the discipline of discipleship you find most difficult? I would that you pause for a moment and think about your answer. What is it that faith in God and following Jesus Christ requires of you that you struggle with? What does faith in God and following Jesus Christ ask of you that you find hard to do? What does faith in God and following Jesus Christ demand of you that is a whole lot easier said than done? What are some of the most difficult disciplines of being a Christian? Well, I'm going to share with you some of the results of the survey and see if you can find an amen. Coming in at number three, church-going Christians said they found most difficult was the commandment to lead others to Jesus Christ. Church-going Christians said that they felt unprepared, inadequate, to answer questions others may have about faith. They felt that they did not know enough to lead someone into salvation in Jesus Christ. And Paul, as a result, most church-going Christians don't lead people to Christ. They invite folk to church. And those are not the same. That's number three. Number two, I know there's going to be an amen. Number two is forgiveness. You've been saved a long time, but all of us can admit that forgiving folk is a lot easier said than done. Forgiveness is one of the most difficult things God requires of us in relationship with other people. Number three was sharing their faith and leading people to Christ. Number two was forgiving. But the most difficult thing, according to the survey, that church-going Christians struggle with was knowing how to discern the will of God for their lives. The most difficult thing church-going folks struggle with is how do I know what God really wants me to do? How do I get in tune with God's will for my life? How do I find clarity when I'm confused and really don't know what God requires of me? When I'm standing at a fork in the road and I've got different options and decisions in front of me, how do I really know which one God is calling me to? Have you ever been in a place where you didn't really know what God required of you? Yeah. Have you ever struggled to discern what God's will was? Have you ever been down the road and had to pause and ask yourself, is this God's plan or am I simply doing what I want to do? Is there anyone here that's ever struggled to know the will of God? Well, since you don't want to be honest, allow me to be honest for your behalf that I still struggle trying to know God's will. I gave my life to the Lord when I was six years old. I've been saved for 46 years, and I still struggle to know the will of God. I've got a seminary degree on my wall, and with all the Hebrew and Greek I know, I still sometimes don't know what God requires of me. 
I've been pastoring 25 years helping you all answer a question that sometimes I can't even answer for myself. How do I know what God really wants me to do? I've been preaching Jesus for 35 years of my life. And there are moments when I open up my Bible on sit down on a Monday trying to figure out what the word of God will be from Sunday. And I have no clue what God requires of me. I struggle with the will of God, and I would suggest that you do too. The number one question I get as a pastor always revolves around how to discern God's will. When a couple comes to me and they are curious about in vitro fertilization, what they really want to know is, is this God's will? When a member comes and says that there's a new job opportunity in Texas that requires them to leave D.C., what they really want to know is God calling me to this. When you found that boo, that bay that tickles your heart and you feel all warm and fuzzy and you're thinking about saying I do, what you really ought to ask is this God's will for my life? When a new opportunity comes your way, is this what God is calling me to do? When you've got to stand at the bedside of a loved one and make a difficult decision, what you really want to know is, God, what is your will? We struggle to discern the will of God because of the truth of God be told. Knowing God's will is not always easy. Don't let your neighbor fool you with that sanctified look and that cross on their neck and that I love Jesus bumper sticker on their car and that Bible in their hand. It is not easy to discern the will of God. Oh, that God would send an email in the morning from God to Howard, subject line, my will. I mean... I mean, God, let, let, let me wake up to a text message in the morning because you're on my favorites list and just text me what, what my agenda for the day ought to be. God, when I'm praying and I don't know what to do, can, can, can you just send an infomercial while I'm watching TV to just share with me what your will is for free 99? God, tell me what you want me to do. Can I be honest? And even with your Bible reading self, you can read everything from Genesis to Revelation and still not know what God wants you to do in a given situation. When you're trying to figure out whether you ought to move to Texas or stay in D.C., there's no word about Texas in the Bible. You can go to Scripture and still walk away confused. We all struggle to discern the will of God and allow me to say that I am concerned about anyone who doesn't struggle with the will of God. I'm worried about you if you've never scratched your head trying to figure it out. I, I'm really concerned if you've never had a moment of confusion when you didn't know what God really required of you because if you've never struggled, if you've never been concerned, if you've never been confused about the will of God, that means you're in one of two places. You, you may be one who the reason you don't struggle with the will of God is because you don't care about the will of God. Beloved, I would suggest to you that if you don't struggle to know God's will, it's because you ain't seeking to know God's will. You've decided you got this. You made up in your mind you're going to live life on your own terms. That you're smart enough to navigate your way through the situations and circumstances of your life and you careth not whether your decisions in life are perfectly aligned with the will of God because you got this. If that's you, I want you to read Proverbs when you get home. 
chapter 14, verse 12, let me make it easy. There is a way that seems right to us, but it leads to destruction. Well, if you're not the one that's not concerned, then maybe you don't struggle with the will of God because you have convinced yourself that you know God's will all the time. You've convinced yourself that if you want it, God must have willed it. That if it feels right to you, it must be right with God. That if it makes sense to you, it must be what God has in store for you. And allow me just to pause and give a word to you today that just because you want it doesn't mean God has willed it. Uh, just because you desire it does not mean God has designed it. Just because it looks good to you does not mean it's God's plan for you. As a matter of fact, let me prove it real quick. I'm looking for some honest folk in the sanctuary. I know this may jeopardize your reputation, but I'm looking for some folk that can be honest and declare that you've made some decisions in life only to get down the road and look back at the decision you made and can declare that was not God's will for my life. Come on, be honest with me. Is there anybody here? You were at a crossroad. You weighed out the options. You took the risk assessment. You sought advice from your mentor. You asked your mama and them to pray over the situation. You did what you thought was right, only to get down that road and find out that God wasn't nowhere in that decision. That was not God's plan for Is there anybody here that can be honest enough to declare, I made some bad decisions in life? Oh, but here's the shout. I messed up, but God fixed it. I, I went down the wrong road, but God brought some good out of it. That God blessed me in spite of it. Is, is there anybody here? God is so gracious. Even when I made a bad decision, he worked it together. For my good. Beloved, I came to declare to you on this day that the greatest tool you can have in your toolbox of life is knowing how to discern the will of God. The greatest skill you can ever have is to know when God is speaking, how God is speaking, and what God is saying. I live long enough now to tell you that there is no greater joy or peace in life than to be in the will of God. Let me say that again. There's no greater joy or peace than to be in the will of God. One more time for the sanctified slow. There's no greater joy or peace than to live your life in full alignment with God's will. Karen Clark Sherrod has a song that I love. It simply goes like this. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. Sister, you can't want anything better than God's will. Brother, you can't navigate into anything better than God's will. Nothing gives you as much joy as being in God's will. Nothing brings as much peace as living in God's will. Nothing cures your anxiety like being in God's will. Nothing will let you lay down at night and lay your head down, close your eyes, open your mouth, and drool out the corner of your lips like knowing that you are in the will of God. And because joy is in God's will, but yet knowing God's will is one of our greatest struggles, I want to begin a new series today, simply entitled, Thy Will Be Done. And I invite you over the next few weekends to join in sermonic conversation as we talk about the ways to discern, discover, and do the will of God in your life. How do I know 
God's will. Well, beloved, that is part of the lesson that God is teaching God's people who are here in Babylonian captivity as God speaks to them through the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 29 takes a dating of around 597 B.C. At this time, Jerusalem, as you know, has been destroyed by the Babylonians led by Nebuchadnezzar. And according to Jeremiah chapter 58, some 4,600 Jewish men have been snatched out of Israel and forced into exilic existence in Babylon. When you count up the women and children, that number soars to about 15,000 children of God who are now living in captivity in Babylon. Teach the Bible, Howard John. Theron, if ever there were people who struggle to know the will of God, it's these folk right here. They are distant from God. They feel abandoned by God. They're wondering why this happened to them. They're looking around their situation and circumstance and saying there's no way this can be the will of God. They are yearning for the Lord to say something. God, reveal your will. Do, do something to encourage us in this situation. Here they are struggling to know God's will. And if we listen to the prophet Jeremiah, there are some lessons we can learn about discerning God's will for our own lives. Let me share a couple with you today and invite you for a few more over the few next weeks. Let me share with you the very first thing I want you to know about the will of God that comes right out of God's lesson to these people right here. You ready? Number one is this. God has a plan for every area of your life. I'm going to say that again. God has a plan for absolutely every single area of your life. No matter how insignificant it seems to you. No matter how trivial the decision looks, no matter how minor it may feel to you, for everything you go through, for everything you decide, God has a will. God has a will for every decision you've got to make. God has a will for every action you've got to take. God has a will for every responsibility laid on your shoulders. God has a will for every relationship you get yourself in. God has a plan and a purpose for every dime and dollar that you earn. Whenever you stand at a crossroad and a fork in the road, God has a plan for which road you ought to take. God has a plan for every day, for every hour, for every minute of your life. There is nothing that's going on in your life that God looks at and says, I don't care. There's no decision you've got to make where God says, well, go on and you make the decision. For every choice you've got to make, God has a plan. Watch what he tells his children of Israel. We shout over it. He tells them in verse 11, I know the thoughts I think for you. I've got a plan for you. Watch, watch what God says. I, I've got a plan for you. I've got a path I want you to go down. I've got a destination I'm trying to usher you to. I've got a table prepared for you that I'm trying to get you to sit down at. God says, I've got something up my sleeve for you. I know the plans I have for you. And y'all, we shout on verse 11. When all hell breaks loose, God has a plan. And when God says this to them, let me teach Bible. He's giving them the assurance that in 70 years, he's going to bring them back to Jerusalem. He says, I got a plan, 
but it's going to take 70 years to fill out. But hold on, I know what I'm doing. We shout over verse 11 because God has a plan for our future. But if you don't read all the Bible, you'll miss that God also says, I got a plan for 70 years from now, but I also got a plan for right here and right now. Watch. He says to them, I know the plan I have down the road. He said, but while you're in Babylon, there's some stuff I want you to do while you are while you are right now. He tells me verse 5, verse 6, and verse 7. While you're in Babylon, uh, build some houses and, and make yourself at home. Uh, plant some gardens and go on and eat you some greens at night. Get your children hooked up with somebody else's children and y'all have some grandchildren and prosper where you are because my plan is not limited for your future. My plan is for your right now. Yes, I know what I'm doing down the road, but there's some stuff I want you to do right where you are. Because wherever you are, I've got a plan. Whatever you're dealing with, I've got a plan. Whatever's on your agenda, I have a will. For every decision you've got to make, I have a choice for you because there's nothing you go through that God doesn't have a will for. There's no decision you've got to make that God doesn't. There's not a day you wake up and there's not a will God has for how that day ought to look in your life. Can I push it? The reason God has a will for even the smallest things, watch this, is because God is omniscient. God knows everything. You know what God knows? God knows the consequence of every choice you make. God says, I know you got 13 choices in front of you. And I know where all 13 will lead. And the reason I have a will for every small thing is because even the small things begin to point you towards my perfect will for the final destination that I'm trying to take you to. There is no decision too small for God to be involved in. He tells him, I want you to build houses and grow in Babylon so that when I bring out my other will 70 years from now to take you to Jerusalem, you will have been prospered and you will not have died, that you will have generations that can then move back to Jerusalem. So if you don't do the will I have for you today, you'll never know the will I have for you tomorrow. I need you to obey my will in the smallest things. Hear me. God has a will for everything. When you're standing in line trying to figure out what to order, God has a will. When you're flipping through Netflix trying to figure out what to watch for the next 30 minutes, God has a will. When you're down at the dealership trying to figure out what color to place your order in, God has a preference. When you're on the matchmakehookup.com scrolling through every picture, God has a will. When you stand in your closet trying to figure out what you going to wear today, God has a will. Let me prove it to you. A few weeks ago after church, sister came down to the altar. She said, Pastor, I need you to pray with me. I said, what's going on? She said, I'm unemployed. But I get a big job interview on Thursday. Will you pray with me? So we held hands right here at the altar, Vernon, and we prayed for God's will to be done on her job interview. She said to me, Pastor, do you have any advice? I said, Sister, just pray about everything. So Thursday came and went. She came back to church next Sunday. I said, what happened? She said, well, Pastor, I did what you said. I prayed over everything. I prayed that God would be in the interview. I prayed that God would give me the right answers to the questions that were asked. So I prayed for God to tell me what to eat for breakfast on Thursday morning. 
She said, I even prayed in the closet asking God to tell me what outfit to wear to the interview. I said, you prayed over what outfit to wear? She said, yes, I did. She said, I felt the Lord tell me to put on my red blouse. I said, you wore red <laughs> to an interview? That's an aggressive color to wear <laughs> to an interview. She said, yeah, I prayed about it, but I felt the Lord told me to put on my red blouse. I said, how'd the interview go? She said, well, went down and had the interview. I didn't, didn't know if it was going well. It didn't seem like it was going well. The sister who was interviewing me, we didn't seem to have a real relationship. There wasn't a good, a good vibe. She was asking me questions, and I, I thought I was giving good answers, but it didn't seem well. She said, and as I was getting up leaving, the sister said to me, by the way, I like your blouse. <laughs> sister said, well, I appreciate it. I didn't know whether wearing red was right. She said, wearing red is always right because I'm a member of Delta Sigma Theta. <laughs> it gets gooder. The sister tells the interviewer, she said, well, I'm not a Delta, but my mom is a Delta. The interviewer says, well, my mama was a Delta. She said, where'd your mom go to school? She said, my mom went to Tuskegee. She said, my mama went to Tuskegee. Found out that their mothers were lying sisters, and she never would have known it if she hadn't listened to God to wear the red blouse that then opened up the relationship that got her the job simply because God knows the consequence of every choice you've got to make. I don't know who I came to preach to today. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Nothing is too small to pray about. Because God has a will for every area of your life. Can I push it? It won't be long. I'm about to find my seat. God says, I know the thoughts I think. I know the plans I have. Dr. Judy, because you're going to be here, I had to do my little homework to make sure I understood the Hebrew for the word thought, for the word plan. It's Mahashava, Mahashava. And you know what it literally means? It means to dream. It means to imagine. You missed the shout. God says, I've been dreaming about you. Wow. Wow. I've been imagining what your life could be like. I've been planning something for you. I had a vision board for your life when I formed you in your mother's womb. Y'all, I just came by to declare on my behalf, I don't want to die until I see everything God has dreamed for me. God, don't call me to glory until I walk in everything you've imagined for me. God, don't call me home until I experience everything. I wish there was some folk that I just want to walk in God's dream. I want to live out God's imagination. I want to see what God has in store for me. God has a dream for me. He's imagined my life. It's a plan, but it ain't a prison. It's not something you're locked into. Hear me, beloved. God will never force God's dream on you. God will never remove all the options so the only one left is what he's imagined for you. I don't want you to choose me because I'm the only option you got. I 
want you to choose me because you want me. So here's the second lesson, and, and I'm done, is that the will of God cannot be discerned without desire. You got to want this thing. Listen to what he tells these children of Israel in Babylon. He said, you can find me, but you got to seek for me. I ain't just going to drop it in your lap. If you seek for me with all your heart, listen to the language of God, I'll let you find me. I'll let you see my will when you prove to me that's what you want. That that's what you desire. Beloved, the only way to know the will of God is to desire it. So I came to ask you a question while you're struggling to figure out what God wants you to do. Do you really want to know? How deeply do you desire the will of God? Are you willing to surrender your dreams for God's plan? Are you willing to walk away from what you want to say yes to what God wills? Are you ready to say no to yourself so you can say yes to God? Hear me, and I know you won't like this. God does not reveal God's will to hardened hearts. God's will can never be discerned by an obstinate mind that has already determined what you is and ain't going to do. Sharice stiff necks can never see God's will. His word, Lord, that if you want to know my will, you got to want it. You, you, you got to start changing your prayer life. Stop giving me a 30-second prayer. Tell me what you want. Learn to sit in prayer until you reach a place like Isaiah. He said, here am I, Lord. Whatever you want me to do is what I'm going to do. Pray until you can pray like Samuel. Speak, Lord, because your servant is listening. Pray until you can pray like Jesus. Lord, take this cup from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Pray until you can sing like the Thompson Community Choir. Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say do. Use me, Lord. Pray until you can pray the words of Shirley Caesar. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree and my answer will be. It starts with what your heart desires. Do you want to know the will of God? Let me leave you with hopefully something that drives it home. I like listening to the radio when I drive. I'm grateful to God, and I, I want to ask you, what's your favorite radio station? May, uh, if you're holy, you're going to say 104.1.
If you're righteous and ratchet, 95.5. If you're over 50, 102.3. What's your favorite radio station? Did you know your radio station that you like is broadcasting right now? They are broadcasting from the source the music you want to hear right now. Right now, Mel, you're getting bombarded with 104.1. 104.1 is hitting you with radio waves right now. Johnny, 102.3 is hitting you with radio waves right now. Carla, 95.5. You're getting hit with a broadcast right now because the radio station is always broadcasting. But you can't hear it because you don't have a receiver. It's broadcasting, but you need something to receive it in order to hear it. It's always broadcasting, but you need a receiver. And even if you have a receiver, you gotta tune in to the right frequency. You can't hear 1041 if your receiver is on 93.5. Y'all, I um, this past fall drove Deuce down to Ole Miss. We had to drive throughout the night. And when it was my shift to drive, about 3 in the morning, I drove from 3 to 11. We were going through Tennessee. And um, I wanted to listen to the radio while I was going through Tennessee. I wanted Dick Tom wanted to hear some R and B while I'm driving. Now, now you may not know this, but finding an R and B station when you're driving through Tennessee is a lot easier said than done. I, I don't know the station, so I'm trying to find R and B, but I know it's broadcasting, and I got the receiver. So in order to find it, Zena, there's a button says seek. And, and so I hit seek, and the radio will go to a station. And I hit seek, and it go to another station. I kept hitting seek because it, I know they're broadcasting, and I know I've got a receiver, but, but I'm trying to hear what I need to hear. But the only way I can hear it is if I seek. So, so I'm seeking, I'm seeking, I'm seeking. Um, but I don't know the stations, but here it is. I do know what R&B sounds like. Because I've listened to enough R&B that, that when I seek, I know what I'm listening for because I've been raised in R&B. So, so when I hit seek uh, and, and I heard uh, Bonnie Raitt, I go, that ain't it. <laughs> when I hit seek, and I heard something in Spanish, I know that ain't it. But when I hit seek and some classical music came on, I know that ain't it. And then I hit seek and I heard Real Love by Mary J. Blige. Now, 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 now that could be. Some crossover, so. So I didn't hit seek again, I just stayed right there because I know what I'm listening for, and this sounds like what I'm listening for, so I had to stay right there. I stayed there through the commercial break. The next song that came on was Forever My Lady by Jodeci. I knew right then I had the right station. Because I know what R&B sounds like when I'm seeking for it with the receiver of the broadcast that's always coming. So I'm listening to the music, 
But now I got another problem. Because Cooper is awake and he's got his phone up. And now I can't hear forever my lady because the noise in the car is too loud. So even though it's broadcasting and I've got the receiver and I've been seeking and I'm listening, I now got to turn down all the sounds that are drowning out the broadcast that I'm trying to hear. It's broadcasting. I've got the receiver. I've been seeking because I know what I'm listening for. And I stayed till I heard it. I had to turn down the other sounds. John, you know what happened? I kept driving. Eventually the sound began to fade. Because I got too far from the source. God is always broadcasting. God has a will for everything. The problem is you don't have a receiver. Your receiver is the desire of your heart to want to know the will of God. But then you've got to seek it. You've got to seek and seek and seek. And the reason we read the Bible is so that I know what God sounds like when I hear God speak. The Bible lets me know that ain't him. The Bible says, no, that ain't God. But then I hear something that sounds like God, but now I've got to sit with it to make certain that it is God. And I've got to fast to turn down the noise that's all around me. And I've got to pray to stay close to the source so I can hear the broadcast. God has a will for your life. You've got to desire it. You've got to seek for it. You've got to stay in your word so you know what it sounds like. You've got to fast to shut down all the other noise that's distracting you. And you've got to pray to stay close to the source. If you can't discern God, maybe you've moved too far from God. What's in your heart, brother? What do you deeply desire, my sister? Today, your life will change in simply saying, I desire something better. I desire to know God's will, Pastor. I want, I want to live in God's will. I want to be what God dreamed my life would be. Lord, I pray right now that as you're broadcasting your will, as you're saying to someone that new life can begin, as you're declaring that if anyone come to Christ, they are new. God, I pray right now that someone would not miss the broadcast because you give them the receiver of the desire of their heart. God says, it's this simple, my brother. It's this simple, my sister. You just have to want it. I'm not going to force you into salvation, but if you want it, it's freely available to you. So today, if you're here, as we bring an end to this prayer, if you're here and you're hearing God speak to you, God is calling you into new life in Christ. God is calling you to part of a church family where you go and grow, a place where you live out the call and the will of God for your life. I say to you, don't let this moment pass you by. God, call your son, call your daughter now as we receive them in Jesus' name. Come on, family, would you stand with me as we open this invitation of salvation to those who would come today. If you're here and you really desire new life, it's real simple. All you've got to do is move from wherever you may be standing or sitting, make your way to the altar, and let God handle the rest. Won't you, won't you come, my brother and my sister, to salvation, to membership in this church family? 
Come on, family, let's sing out together. Don't let this moment pass you by. This moment, God bless you, brother. Jesus is waiting. Bless you, my sister. Bless you in Jesus' name. If you're watching online, you can come even now. Just fill out that membership form. Let us know you desire to know God more deeply. Bless you. Come, sister. God is calling you. Somebody else, the Lord is calling you today. Won't you say yes? brother the Lord is calling yes yes this moment sanctuary. Even where you are right now, God's offer of salvation stands for you. And space in the Alpha Street Baptist Church is waiting on you. All you need to do is go out to our website, fill out that membership form, let our deacons reach out to you even today to share with you the amazing things God has in store and planned for your life. Today we thank God for these, our sisters and brothers who've come. Help me celebrate their decision to give their life to Jesus and to join this family. We're going to escort them to our room where the deacons can share gracefully with them all the things God has in store to welcome and receive them. Won't you join us in prayer tonight at 7 p.m. Tomorrow at 7 a.m. we continue our seek journey. Our prayers will be upon you as we prepare to leave this place on the voices of the Psalms of Praise who bless us in our final selection. And then we leave with our benediction.
to the Almighty and the All-Wise, the Sovereign and Eternal, the faithful and omnipotent God who alone is creator of heaven and earth, to the God who's made himself perfectly known to us, in Jesus who always and alone is our Christ, our loving Lord, our sacrificial Savior, our resurrected, risen, reigning, returning Redeemer, to the God who chooses to dwell in these earthen vessels of clay, through the sustaining power, promise, presence, purpose, and person of the Holy Spirit, to that all wise God be both glory and majesty, dominion and all power, from now till eternity. And the redeemed of the Lord who loved the Lord and knew that God was good, said amen. And go in the grace of God and may the grace of God go with you. What's up, Alpha Street family? I'm Charnel King and I'm the new social media manager. Let's get into these wonderful upcoming announcements. Seek 2024 starts this week, which is our church-wide corporate fast. Online registration is now open. So make sure you scan the QR code on the screen to register your family and friends so that you can join the already nearly 10,000 seekers who have already registered. There are three ways you can participate in the fast, social media, a Daniel fast, and even financial. Again, scan the QR code to register and to find more information about all things Seek. Now, here are the remaining upcoming announcements for the week. We know that these are difficult and challenging times. We invite you to stay connected by participating in our online worship services and remain faithful in your giving online via our Alfred Street website, ASBC app, and on our text messaging system. If you have any questions about giving, please feel free to email our finance department at finance at alfredstreet.org. If you're interested in becoming a member of the historic Alfred Street Baptist Church, please email deacons with an S at alfredstreet.org or complete the membership form on our website or on our ASBC app. We invite everyone to join us for our Seek 7 a.m. prayer call. New this year, we will offer a daily prayer call with Pastor Wesley available on Zoom audio. This will be a live audio Zoom call at 7 a.m. Eastern Time every morning and every night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Please check your email for the Zoom link or visit our website or any of our social media platforms. Please click on the Zoom prayer link graphic and log on to Zoom audio prayer call. We will not be utilizing our old call-in prayer line phone number during Seek. We will only be utilizing our new Zoom audio call-in feature. Again, please visit our website or your e-blast for more information. Speaking of Seek, do you want to receive a special inspirational text message from Pastor Wesley every day during the Seek fasting period? It all starts on Monday, January 22nd. If so, please text the word, I thirst seek, case sensitive, all one word, to 571-977-4525. Normal text rates will apply to your bill. Be sure to visit our website for more information or details and all things seek. We invite everyone to join us for our final seminary Saturday with Reverend Dr. May Elise Cannon, Executive Director of Churches for Middle East Peace. Join us at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time in person and or online as she presents the history of mischief making and prophetic witness of American Christian perspectives towards the Holy Land. Free breakfast starts at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Attendance is free, but please visit our website and register today. Alpha Tree Baptist Church community, our Office of Christian Care and Counseling would like to invite everyone to focus on mental stamina during the month of January. Stamina is not always related to physical strength and endurance. Solving a difficult puzzle or a complex problem requires your brain to work long and hard, something called mental stamina. If you've had a really tough year but are doing generally fine, someone might say you have emotional stamina. It can also mean perseverance. Please visit our website and or virtual events page for helpful links and more info on mental stamina. This information will be available throughout the month of January. For more info, email pastoralcounseling at alfredstreet.org. Family, what is going on? It is your favorite, the Reverend Ty Jones at the Alfred Street Baptist Church and Kaya has something big going on. 
February the 1st at 7 o'clock at Culture House DC. Choir rehearsal with friends is invading the DMV. My boy Will Johnston is coming to town and this is his first time in the DMV. So do me a favor, grab your mama, your grandmama, your aunties, your uncles, everybody and meet me there. 7 o'clock, Culture House DC. Hire and choir rehearsal with friends. You're gonna have an amazing time. I love y'all, I see you there. Alfred Street's Missions and Outreach Department is seeking licensed barbers to volunteer monthly at one of our local homeless shelters. The time of your commitment would be from 7 a.m. to 12 p.m. for a minimum of one Saturday per month. All barbers must be licensed with their own tools. If interested, please contact missions at alfredstreet.org for details. Our January 2024 Pastor's Pick for Alfred Street's Book of the Month is Soul Care in African American Practice by author Dr. Barbara L. Peacock. In the midst of our hectic, overscheduled lives, caring for the soul is imperative. Now more than ever, we need to pause intentionally and encounter the divine. As we prepare for our 21-day fast, Seek, this book will illustrate a journey of prayer, spiritual direction, and soul care from an African-American perspective. Be sure to purchase a copy of this book from your favorite retailer. Are you looking for an incredible opportunity to share your musical talents? If so, look no further. Alfred Street Sanctified Symphony Orchestra is thrilled to announce that they are recruiting talented musicians like you to join their harmonious family. They're calling for all musicians to join them every Friday evening from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Send an email to sanctifiedsymphony at alfredstreet.org if interested. They can't wait to welcome you into the Alfred Street Baptist Church Sanctified Symphony Orchestra. Hey Alfred Street, Versus is back in stock. Our Versus team has been working around the clock to create another batch of our popular Versus Bible-based trivia card game, and they're now available for purchase. That's right, purchase your set of Versus cards today before we sell out again. Visit our website or ASBC app and be the first to get your hands on Versus, a Bible-based trivia game by Alfred Street Baptist Church. Alfred Street's Office of Christian Care and Counseling in conjunction with the Health and Well-Being Recovery Ministry present a bi-weekly peer support session virtually via Zoom. That's every first and third Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Visit our website for the Zoom link information. The Recovery Ministry peer support sessions will provide a safe and confidential environment to confront addictions, compulsive behaviors, and issues that interfere with a renewed relationship with God. Email recovery at alfredstreet.org for details. Calling all parents and guardians of children, youth, and teens. Alfred Street's Children and Youth Ministries are back. We're currently accepting registrations for Kid Street, Crossover, and Higher Ground. Visit our website to register your child or youth today. Alfred Street invites everyone to join the Joyce K. Peterson Handbell Ringers. They are thrilled to announce that their ensemble recruitment is now open. If you have a passion for music and a heart for worship, we invite you to be a part of this harmonious journey. If you can read music and are eager to contribute your talents to a musical ministry that touches souls, this is your moment to shine. For more info and to express your interest, please email handbell at alfredstreet.org. Our Faith Savage Gun tutorial ministry has a new home online. Communicate, learn, and stay informed all in one place. Visit our new webpage and check us out today at alfredstreet.org. Email tutorial at alfredstreet.org for details. Our ASBC Village study guide is now available on the website to download. Be sure to check out a copy if you want to go deeper with Pastor Wesley's sermon prepared for you by the Villages of Alfred Street team. The guide is available online at alfredstreet.org. Hey, Alfred Street family and friends. Are you visiting us for the very first time? Or perhaps you're new to Alfred Street and you want to stay connected to us or receive the latest Alfred Street updates via text. If so, all visitors text the word visitors with an S to our new direct text number, 571-977-4525. That's 571-977-4525.
Also, we invite you to tune in to our Faith Forward weekly radio broadcast featuring Pastor Howard John Wesley every Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Magic 102.3 FM and 92.7 FM for a powerful sermon that will move you forward in your faith. For more information on these and all the exciting events taking place here at Alfred Street, please log on to alfredstreet.org.